The governor has just signed AB 2183. This is your victory. Every worker who sacrificed, every one of you who struggled and donated your time and your energy to get this done. Starting next year, farm workers can participate in elections free from intimidation and deportations. Si se puede. Well, that is the president of the United Farm Workers of America, Teresa Romero, who is celebrating the passage of AB 2183, specifically the signature by Governor Gavin Newsom of California. It passed a while ago, we'll get into why he was so slow to sign it. But as she mentioned, this allows farm workers to unionize via mail, which is legal under the NLRB, but because of the NLRB's Essentially racist history, farm workers were excluded from those protections. Um, this includes them in those protections on a statewide level. Um, this obviously is a win that TYT covered the organizing lead up to in terms of um, massive uh, work like a 330 mile march from the Central Valley of California all the way to the capital of the state in Sacramento um, to pressure Newsom to finally do it. Some background on who this would help, there are more than 400,000 agricultural workers in this state. Researchers at the University of California were said in the nonprofit newsroom Cal Matters reports, based on a 2020 Bureau of Labor Statistics National Employment Survey calculated that the percentage of the state's farm workers belonging to a union was statistically zero. So. Yeah, it's an it's an unorganized workforce. Uh, obviously, United Farm Workers have, for since the days of Cesar Chavez, um, have been advocating and working alongside farm workers. Um, this sort of flies in the face of a SCOTUS ruling last year. I don't know if you guys remember. Um, there was a blow to unions, especially in the agricultural sector here in California, because the US Supreme Court ruled that a California regulation allowing organizers to recruit farm workers at their workplaces violated the constitutional rights of their employers. In other words, violates the rights of the people who are underpaying them to sweat in the hot sun, picking grapes, etc., etc., etc. So this will be a challenge to that, it will make it easier. And again, these kinds of rights are decided on a statewide level. It's unclear whether those are gonna be in conflict with one another, but we shall see. More on the law, it allows expanded voting options for farm workers, allowing them to vote by mail, drop off a ballot card at the State Agricultural Labor Relations Board. They can also receive assistance filling out their ballots. Previously, secret ballot elections were held at polling places designed by the board. Union officials said the changes are necessary to protect farm workers from intimidation and even deportation for supporting a union. As you guys know, here in California, um, there are a lot of farm workers, as I mentioned, about 75% of them are undocumented. The, uh, California has expanded rights for undocumented people. For example, just recently, they can have um, a state ID, not just a driver's license, but like an official ID. Um, so this sort of goes along with that. Now, Governor Newsom hasn't always been on board. In fact, last September, a year ago, he vetoed this bill, he refused to sign this. And um, he claimed that this was untested, that um, I don't know about the mail-in ballots and na, na, na. And uh, it would have nothing to do with the fact that he is very much entrenched in a little bit of the agricultural sector himself. I wanted to show this clip from More Perfect Union, which does amazing work when it comes to union organizing across the country, take a look. On August 26th, Newsom's communication director said he cannot support the farm worker bill in its current form. That same day, the San Francisco Chronicle reported that a winery group co-founded by Newsom had spent $14.5 million to acquire an 129-acre California vineyard. Pero yo pienso que es porque él está pensando más como un ranchero más. Y no como el gobernador de aquí de California. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and even President Joe Biden have urged Newsom to sign the bill into law. Did it make an impact that President Biden weighed in? Oh, uh, President Biden weighs in on a lot of issues. And uh, we had a chance, we've had many chances to dialogue on a lot of issues. Uh, that bill on my desk with a few hundred others, and we're going to take a good look at it. Somos campesinos que vivimos al diario. No somos rancheros que le vamos a dar a ganar dinero. Entonces, ¿qué tú crees que es mejor para para un gobernador? Darle un voto a un campesino 
o darle un no a un ranchero. Just another ranchero, but who finally came around and you can hear the emotion in her voice. Um, finally, finally allowing this bill to go forward. Um, Jake, before I kick it to you, can I just say, I think not only was it Biden, not only was it Pelosi, not only was it all these other otherwise centrist Democrats encouraging him to sign this. But remember just a couple weeks ago um, when Ron DeSantis flew migrants to Martha's Vineyard and tried to use them as props. Here was how Governor Newsom, who really is trying to take aim at, I guess, what he sees as a future opponent. Here's how he was taking a stand for migrants then. Take a look. He comes into another state, your state, to try to find pawns in a political game, rounds them up, sends them to an island, and then fundraises off it. What does that say about his character and the character of the Republican Party that celebrated that act of cruelty and dehumanization? That's right. So. Not a good look if you're gonna veto yet again or refuse to sign a bill helping farm workers and migrants in your own state, buddy. Um, Jake, weigh in on this, please. Yeah, so this was so innocuous. This is just to, hey, can they vote for mail instead of coming in and voting in front of their employer? Well, that's a big deal. Like, and And then Newsom said it was, Untested. What's so untested about it? We vote by mail. In fact, Democrats go nuts about voting by mail. Like that, that's a great thing. That's a wonderful thing. Oh, union guys are going to do it. Labor's going to do it. Uh, untested. Okay, come on. You guys, look, you watch TYT, so you know how politics actually works, right? So the agriculture industry, his own personal interest, financial interest, and the Chamber of Commerce were all against this because they want to be able to intimidate their workers. Why did Why did they even care? Like if you want an honest vote, that's fine. That makes perfect sense to me, right? But what difference does it make if they mail it in or you're watching over them? No, you're trying in that case, you're trying to intimidate it. But it's a t- it's not a big giant change, right? It's not like mm-hmm. they're increasing the minimum wage and it's gonna give you guys six thousand dollars more, which he also uh refused to do, right? Uh and, and that's winds up being sixty-four billion dollars and chamber of commerce is super amped up. No, this is a tiny thing. But even that, he was like, no. No, no, right? So now look, he said yes now. So give credit where credit is due. At the same time, understand how politics works. So why did he say yes? Because of pressure. So was it pressure from progressives? A little bit. Was it pressure from the farm workers? Yes, that was a big chunk of it. And they did a fantastic job of fighting back. And then it was, of course, most importantly, and again, I wish it was more progressives, I wish it was more farm workers. But when Biden and Pelosi and Kamala Harris all weighed in and kind of embarrassed them, and he's thinking of running for president, and he doesn't want to be seen as further to the right than Joe Biden, all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, look at this bill I found! Yeah, yeah. Of, of course I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna sign this." Okay, well, look, I'm glad he signed it, and I, I love that he signed it. So, and I don't care how a politician gets there as long as they get there, right? But if he tells me later, oh, don't worry, I'm gonna do the right thing, you can trust me because I signed that bill. No, everybody had to twist your arm 18 different ways to get you to sign it. If if his career ended now though, I would say yeah, give Gavin Newsom credit because if you sign it, you sign it and that's the only thing that matters. No, he knew he was gonna get called on it because of him grandstanding about the rightfully awful thing that's been going on, you know, in uh, in Florida and in Texas, and the stunts that Abbott and DeSantis are pulling. And so he can't then turn around and like turn his back on migrants, even though he's done it before, and he probably really wants to. And by the way, the reason that he even signed in the first place is because there's a ton of amendments that effectively limit the number of petitions that can be issued or can can happen in a given year from farm workers. Cuz I think, look, here in California, people think we're so blue, we're so progressive. No, we want exploitable labor just as much as any anyone else because they're elites. That's what they want. So they want farm workers to shut up and to be thankful for their jobs in the 110 degree heat. So you know, we'll see. I'm glad he signed it, um, but there is a lot more fight. And man, there is a lot more fight on all different levels when it comes to workers' rights in this state. 
Yeah, and look, it's the last piece of context here. Uh, he's got a mixed record. He did sign a number of bills that are uh, pretty good and some on climate change. Uh, and um, is that because there's a lot of donors in California who care a lot about climate change? Yeah, partly. Yeah. But hey, you got there, you got there, okay? But there's half the stuff he still hasn't gotten there on. And what would be great is if we had a Democrat that we didn't have to constantly push to get to the right place. If they actually meant what they said and wanted to do those things in the first place. But with a system of financing elections that depends on private financing, that's a near impossibility. Because unless you're already independently wealthy, the Gavin Newsom's of the world have to care a lot what the Chamber of Commerce says and what these different industries say, because they're the ones who sign their checks. And anyone who tells you otherwise is just being ridiculously naive. Yes, but farm workers put food on your table, so there's also that.